All right, so good morning, everybody. Thank you for making time this morning to um, grace us with your presence. And um, we do appreciate um, you making the time this morning um, to discuss a few things here. And first and foremost, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Lillian Mokami. I am uh, communications here at Genset. And uh, the next thing is to wish each and every one of us here happy International Women's Day. Um, to all the women out there, we appreciate you. And you see, we see all the work that we are doing to make the world a better place. Um, so this meeting today, we would like to, it being the International Women's Day, um, and, that, and also following on the theme for this year, which is inspiring inclusion, we would like to delve into a very apt topic. Um, being in Ghana, we know we are almost at the two elections. We're in the, a very critical stage right now where a lot of things are set out, where plans and strategies are discussed and put in place. Um, this is the time for women. This is for the, the time for all other groups to come out and articulate um, issues that they might deem um, important. So I would like us to start by introducing ourselves, um, our names, what we do, and um, we can go on from there. Thank you. So Pamela Eva, um, whoever is ready, please feel free to go ahead. Hello, please. My name is Gifty Ofori, and I'm with Genset as Programs and m &E Officer. Thank you. Hello? Yes, go ahead, Eva. We can hear you. Okay. My name is Eva Andofo. I'm a person with disability. I am the Eastern Regional Vice for Persons with Physically Challenged. I'm also the Secretary for the Ghana Federation of Disability Organizations and the Fellow of Kofi Annan Peacekeeping and International Leadership School for Women. Hello everyone, I'm Pamela Bwajua Manze. I'm currently the national coordinator for Transit on NPP projects and um, currently holding the position as Commonwealth Students Association Resource Mobilization Task Force Chairperson. I'm also running a foundation called the Pamitach Foundation, which is focused on empowering women in STEM and leadership. Um, I've also had several the whole health so several leadership positions especially in the um local space and the international space and i'm very very happy to be here to join in um marvelous ladies happy international women's day i believe this discussion is going to be fruitful and we're going to have an impact with our audience thank you thank you so much both um so us having you here it was very intentional and it was very um, aligned with the discussions for today. We are looking at including marginalized groups or minority groups in democracy and governance. And so having someone who advocates for the life for the rights of um, persons with disability and having someone who is very much involved with political parties with Pamela and their proceedings. Um, having you here today will help us shed a bit of light on the current state of inclusivity in our political parties and in politics in Ghana at a larger scale. Um, so a bit of background and you feel free to correct me here and there and also um, chime in here and there. Um, as of right now, the numbers of women in the Ghana parliament stand at as low as 13%. 
and the numbers of persons with disability is even lower. And when you look at the data that is out there on persons with disability who involve themselves with quality, it's not as available. It's very um, minimal. Um, this is to show they're not well documented. And then when we talk about the youth, um, the youth are very much engaged by political parties when it comes to mobilization, when it comes to voting, but are they involved in this decision making um, places? Are they in positions that they can make decisions for themselves? Do they wield any power? Um, so I would like to hear from you what you think the current situation looks like. Is, are there any efforts that have been made? Um, do you feel we have made any milestones since the last elections that were held four years ago? And uh, yeah, so what, in your own view, what is the current situation in, when it comes to involving these groups um, in democracy, in governance? So we can start with you, Eva. Mm, I think for, from 2016 till now, because more women and persons with disability are now going to advocacy, the education is going out there to the minority groups that in terms of governance, they have to get involved. We cannot just sit by and watch decisions being made on our behalf. We have to get involved and even sometimes we can even support others who are willing to be at the decision making table, not necessarily being you per, per se, but you can even support others who are willing and and more, I mean, into it, who want to really go into it. So I think from 2016, we can see some improvement in terms of um, minority groups in governance. We are seeing some improvement, um, mainly at the local level, yeah. Thank you so much, Eva. That is very promising to hear that um, these groups are actually seeing the need for them to involve themselves because as much as we are talking about them being included, um, we also need to see a two-way, this is a two-way street. We need to see effort from both sides. And so this is very encouraging to hear that um, advocacy that has been done, education that has been done is actually making an impact. So to you, Pamela, from an angle of um, being involved in political parties, do you, what is the current state? Do you feel that these groups are actively being sought after, actively being included, that spaces are being created for them to be included? OK, so first of all, I want to say that um, Political parties are making a conscious effort of adding, um, of maximizing the numbers of women participating in politics. They're trying to make the space more accommodative for women. Unlike before, when the narrative was that it was a man's world and women could not um, occupy such positions. But I believe that in our current state as a country, and among all political parties, it is, it is, it is, it is, um, you, you can see the examples, some of the women who are holding such positions as examples of the manifestations of the previous advocacies that have gone on and the current advocacies that are still going on, that we need our women to equally hold the front of these leadership positions. We need our women to be in such positions to inspire the next generation that it is possible for our um, women to equally hold such positions. So currently, this government, for instance, the um, um, Akufua, Nana Akufuado led government, you could see that the, um, the chief of staff, who is a woman, um, is the first female chief of staff, which is one of the highest positions um, in the country. A lot of women been appointed to chief justice positions. And you could see a lot of women being given the opportunity and one thing i want to be more of deserving just because that we are advocating that women should hold such position doesn't mean that we are going for everyone 
women holding such positions should come of quality, should come of deserve, uh, um, um, a deserving angle, such that when they hold such positions, they make that equal impact. It is not that she's being placed there, but it's because she's equally going to make that impact and everybody is going to benefit from her office being holding such position and also complementing the fact that she's a woman and she has certain things, characteristics that makes it different from men holding the position. So um, I think the political parties are making a lot of a lot of strides. You could see the NDC pushing out the first female vice president from John Muhammad's administration. And um, a lot of political parties, even we, um, some political parties currently are being led by women. So um, you could see that the country is taking a turn on women's participation. So we believe that the equal example that Rwanda has been able to make, you know, in, ho in having a lot of women participating in their parliaments, uh, we believe that um, the numbers are going to change going forward. Um, currently, with the primaries that we've had, um, internal political primaries that we have in all political parties, the numbers don't look favorable. But I believe that at least it's 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 a stepping stone um, for coming ca coming years that we are going to have groom a lot of women. And yes, the message out there that the fact that we have such women holding such positions, yes, it's going to, it's tough, it's difficult being there. But it shouldn't deter women, you know, um, coming out of their comfort zones to take up such, such leadership positions. And I'm glad to see um, Eva doing wonderfully well in her, in, her, in, in, in her aspect. You know, she's building her capacity. She's pushing it and she's doing it. And I, I wouldn't be surprised that she might one day hold a leadership position despite her challenges, despite, you know, all these things shouldn't deter just because we are coming from more of a minority, but one thing is that we are not a minority. Women represent a larger part of our population in the country. So if we are able to put ourselves together and advocate for the needs of the vulnerables, advocate for the needs of children, advocate for the needs of women, I believe that um, we are really going to make a massive input. And Prioritizing the fact that the women holding set positions are not only just going to fill the seats, but are going to make that positive impact that everybody is expecting. And I believe that bit by bit, the society will begin to um, reconcile and reconsider and reflect on women's participation in the leadership position and begin to understand that we need to in, um, encourage our women in societies to hold the position. It's not just because it's a man's role, but we've seen examples of women holding such position, doing a marvelously well, impacting the societies other than men who have held such positions before. So it's, I would just, and my final words to our women even out there that although we are advocating for our women to hold such positions, although we are saying that it's time for our women to 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 come up front and although the governments the political parties are trying to open up their arms for women to fall in filling the seat we should not make it uh, um, the work difficult by regretting by coming up um, with a message of regret that such women have held such positions regretted for them holding their set positions because they have not lived up to tax so it is it, it is a call to action that every woman out there holding any position it is it, it it is it is our obligation that we are able to um live up to tax and even do more to become examples so that other women who are trying to build their capacity nature themselves to futurely hold such positions would also be given the chance one day because of you and I, who have made a difference at the top. So um, it, it is a call to action for everyone out there, every woman out there holding the position, uh, any leadership position that whatever it is, what however little it is, even if it's a little impact that he or she has to do, it is time for her to do it. And it's time for her to acknowledge the fact that she is there because a lot of women out there in the society are looking up to her to become, a, um, to become her and even more than her in future when they hold such positions. 
Thank you so much, Pamela, for that. Um, I have picked up on very key topics you have talked about. Number one is um, there is a recurring notion and also um, I wouldn't say intentional um, allocation of seats to women because at times you see you see women get into positions that you know are obviously for women. Um, you look at lists at times and women are all clumped up in a gender department, yeah? And when you talk about, you know, putting women in those situations, putting women in those positions where they are able to effect change, where they're able to make impact, where they're actually equipped and they're well um, experienced for their positions, for them to make that, um, impact it's very important to actually um do that for them to create this change that we want to see um we cannot keep on talking about equality and we are um you know not making the strides on our beat so that is very important and also the bit you talked about um you know regretting being in these positions and not being able to do um a lot or feeling that you are not equipped or you know listening to all that um, um extra noise from outside so we are very appreciative of the efforts that you have talked about um, by political parties to involve these groups. Um, Jensa did an analysis of the primaries that you just mentioned, and we are very hopeful that um, the coming government will be as inclusive as we hope it will be, as we, we see the efforts um, from the stages that they have been able to um, you know, go over um, as of now. And so we are very hopeful for the next government. Um, to Eva, who I know is very much involved with um, disability groups and organizations that do advocacy work. Um, what role do civil societies have to play in this? Um, this is a, an effort for all. So as much as we are talking about political parties, as much as we are talking about um, we ourselves as women, um, what can CSOs do to push um, you know, this agenda from their end? Thank you. So Eva, I don't know if you heard me. Um, sorry, you're on mute. Sorry. Hi, can you hear me now? Uh huh. Um, CSO can support this move by offering training, training assistance because most of the time, um, this minority group don't have the opportunity to join the um uh, so-called big political parties in order to i mean study or learn from the beginner stage to wherever level they wish to i mean get to so most of the time though they have the political will to go out there they may not have enough um understanding into how the whole terrain operates so cso's can offer training. For instance, as Jen said, started with the Young Women Political Leadership School. I, I was uh, one of the beneficiaries in 2016, and it helped me a lot. It helped me a lot in my political journey because most of the things that are being discussed at the political um, level, we don't have such opportunities to hear about it. We only get our information from the news, and the news also put out there. I mean the radio and the tv they put out there what they think will benefit them but not what will benefit the larger society so most of the time we don't get to know exactly how things are being done at that level so when cso's give us the opportunities of offering such trainings it goes a long way in preparing us for the roles that we intend to i mean play in future so i think training more of training and education yeah will help Thank you so much, Eva. Um, that is good news to hear that um, actually there is impact of the work being done by CSOs in collaboration with these groups. Um, so I would like to um, take this discussion to 
an issue that has been in the public um, space in Ghana, especially in Parliament since around 2015, which is the issue of the Affirmative Action Bill. Um, and I'm coming to you, Pamela, on this. So we know the benefits of this bill. Um, we know what it will do to the democracy of the country. We, we know what it will do to development. So talking about this bill, are there ways to we can make sure that actually this is the coming government, this is the time that it will be passed? And my second question will be, what policies exist? Now, this is to both you, Pamela, and Eva. What policies do exist or can be you know, um, formed to ensure there is inclusivity into this in, into this space? So we have the affirmative action bill. Um, do we have anything for um, persons with disabilities to do? And what can be drafted up? What can be pushed? What can be, you know, um, to ensure inclusivity. So, Pamela, um, over to you. Oh, sorry. I think we just lost Pamela on that. So we can go back to you, Eva, um, on what policies exist as of right now um, that seek to make these public spaces, these public positions more inclusive. And are there any suggestions from, you know, the um pwd bodies that you are part of mm. okay for instance at the local government level um we we have been able to push for it to be accepted that there should be a special appointment for a pwd at the local government assembly and we are still pushing hoping that in future at the national level at our leg legislature we will have same appointment for persons with disability because for instance if you are there to make decisions for us and we are not there to tell you what we want and what will not work for us and you decide for us what you think will be okay at the end of the day you may not be able to achieve the 100 percent results that's needed because for instance we we've been advocating about accessibility but when you 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 come to ghana most of our public areas and public places are not accessible because we are not involved in decision making when they are putting up such structures you understand so at the local level now that we have a representative being a special appointment this our reps there can tell what we really need and what will work for us in terms of decision making so we are hoping that in the near future at the legislator which is the national level we can also have same appointments for persons with disability over there in order to air our needs also discuss policies that are going to be made for and on our behalf so that it will not be as if everything is being done on paper but in reality we don't see anything so i think that is another way forward that we have to look at Thank you so much, Eva. And actually, I would like to hear your opinion on the affirmative bill as a woman and as a woman who is interested in politics. Um, what will be your opinion of the bill? Um, why do you think it's yet to pass um, in Parliament for all those years, almost 10 years now? Honestly, um, I, I, I keep wondering why those two big political parties in Ghana are still dragging their feet concerning the affirmative bill action because it's not only going to benefit one party from the other, but it will be win win for both parties if a bill like that is being passed. So I think it's a good move, and I think it is high time we do so because when you look at Rwanda, after Rwanda uh, passed that bill, we can see the progress they are making, and most of the women who had the opportunity to, I mean, um, go for such positions are doing quite well. If we can compare it to our opposite counterparts, we are not saying we are better than them, but all we are saying is that they should give us equal opportunities because most of the things that we need, especially in terms of money, money that is financial support, men seems to have a greater opportunities and greater chances when it comes to women. And because of that, we find it difficult when it comes to um political issues to go out there to speak up and all that because everything has been monetized so without that we feel that we can but if there is a policy in place which make it a must for that 
kind of opportunity to be given to women, I think all political parties will also make it a conscious effort to give them that opportunity. Everything they will need to do to support the woman or the minority group to come forward, be part of the discussion. I mean, at the decision making table, they will do so. So I think it's high time that bill is passed in Ghana, dragging off the feet. I don't see what they are waiting for. I, I keep wondering why they don't want to pass it. Maybe they have their own reasons, but I don't think their reasons supersede the benefit that we will gain if that bill is passed. Yeah. Thank you so much, Eva. And as you said, this bill is only due to help the country. It only bears benefits for the country. And so we do hope um, they actually do pass it into, into parliament. I had to talk about some of the issues that women actually do face to get into these positions. We will get to that. Right now, I want us to talk about the importance of these groups actually mobilizing, of them actually forming bodies and organizations for advocacy. Um, reading from your bio and from your introduction, I can tell you have very much been involved in this space. So what are the key benefits of these groups actually being in those um, organizations and them being um, a joint force? Mm -hmm. I think um, as of 2016, we, we got to know that in Ghana's population, the uh, minority group which I'll say persons with disability makes up 10% of it. And in our election, we always need 50 plus one to, to make one a president of the country. So if PWDs make 10%, then I think their voices must be heard. We, we are equally important at the decision-making table. So I think it is high time these political parties really look out for us make a conscious effort to create opportunities not just at the local level like i said earlier on yes i know some of them are really trying but some of them still have that kind of um uh, other motives behind the scenes though they they will say it openly that they want to make um room for us but behind the scenes they have their own intentions for creating such room. Sometimes they will create the room for, for you, all right. But when you are there, they don't even recognize your existence, that you are there to contribute. But they take it as if, oh, because the position was just given to you, so you are there to represent. No, I think for those who are also having the political will to go out there, shouldn't just see it as an opportunity, but they should see it as something that you merit. Meriting it means working towards it. Being there not as a just as a person representing, but let your voice be heard. Let your, your, your work speak for you. Let them know the impact that you make when the opportunity is given to you. So I think it is also high time that the, the, the political parties make that conscious effort. Yes, they are trying, but I don't think it is enough. It is not enough at all. Looking at our voting percentage, the political parties are not helping. Even with those of us who put ourselves out there to, I mean, go for these positions, they did not make it easy for us. The same political parties did not make it easy for us in terms of the stigma, I mean, the abuse, the insult. <laughs> I don't want to go so much into it, but they should be, I mean, they should be open about it. They should not pretend. I can see a lot of patents in the system. They will say that, oh, we are, we are making effort for them. We are doing this. Recently, with the local government appointment, we, we realized that even that one was political. Because for instance, if Eva qualifies for the position, Eva's party may not be the one in, gov in government now. Because of that, they will not give you the position. They will give it to their member who may not be competent enough to work in that space to support persons with disability you understand so i don't think what what they are giving us is enough it is not enough they are still doing it in their own way they are still i mean giving it to us in a way that will favor them but not favoring us that is what i am seeing thank you so much and i think you have touched on a very important issue where there is need to um, create that very clear outline of political parties and now the government. Um, 
Yes, members of a political party, once they acquire those seats, form the government. But after election, there's need to actually put the politics down and actually serve the people. This is where correct appointments come in. This is where competent people should be holding those positions. This is where we actually involve um, all groups in the government. And so this is a call to all political parties um, that there is actually the need to put politics aside once they attain those things. Um, so Eva, I'd like, I'm actually curious about um, some of the federations and societies you are involved in. Um, just for anyone who might be watching this and would like to really know what um, the Ghana Federation for Disability does, um, or the Society of Physically Disabled, which are the two organizations or other federations you are part of. So we can no. start with the Federation for of Disabilities in Ghana. Okay. When we talk about the Federation, the Federation is a mother organization which comprises of the smaller society. When I say smaller society, that is the Ghana Blind Union, National Association for the Deaf, the Association for Abinos. We have um association for mental the society for the mental health we have um association for persons with intellectual disability we have association for stammerers we have i mean all forms of disability have the associations and they come together to form the national federation so federation is the mother union for all the associations of disabilities then when we talk about the ghana society of the physically challenged as the name goes the type of disability that the eyes can see for instance those of us who uses crutches and wheelchairs and those that uh, limp on their feet those who have amputees maybe at the lower or the upper part of their bodies they are the ghana society of the physically challenged so all of these associations comes under the federation thank you so much and the reason why i asked you about this is for any um persons with disability who is wondering where to start in terms of having support for any um situation may it be legal or political i do believe these are some of the groups they can approach they might not get the direct help but they might get support in where they can get the help they need there is also the need to have sense of community especially if you are um, going um, for a certain change, if you're trying to make any change in the society, um, advocacy in groups is easier than individual advocacy. So yeah. this is for any um, persons with disability who feel that whatever they might want to, action they might want to take in their life or in their community, these are kind of the groups they should be able to leverage on and they should get in contact with. Um, Am I right, Eva? Yes, you are right. For instance, when you join the association, in any kind of um, aspiration you are looking out for, we give you um, support, being in terms of training, or if we can even contact a CSO that can offer you what you need in your journey, we do so. And some of us, too, have decided to form an advocacy group that push towards the policies that we want to be implemented. I have been there before, I have the experience. Now I've decided to go in terms of leadership training. From what I have learned so far, I'm also trying to mentor some of our women to go out there to encourage them to have the political will because we cannot sit down for someone to prepare the food for us to eat all the time. It is time we also go to the kitchen to prepare what we want to have. Because if you make them understand that if you are there to prepare it with them, you definitely get what you want. But if you want them to prepare it for you, you will not get what you want all the time. So some of us are out there pushing very hard, encouraging our people, especially the women and the youth, to go out there. And also even starting from the basic level, because we realize that most of our people could not get the training from the basic level. They just grow into it. So starting at that level becomes difficult for them. By the time you get to your goal, maybe age has catch up with you. So if we start from the basic level, that's the basic school level, trying to train them, making them understand why it is very necessary and important 
to put yourself out there to have a political role to get involved by the time they get to the age the required age in ghana which is 18 years and above they have a fair idea of what they are going into and they can also make right decisions for themselves so i think it is very necessary that those of us who have the experience put ourselves out there to support others and also to encourage them to push thank you so much for something you have said of them understanding the process rather than always finding the finished service finished service or the product um yeah. so that is very very commendable work and we're very grateful for you and um, your counterparts for the work that you are doing. Um, I am in communication with Pamela and Henrietta. Apologies for them not being able to join <laughs> yet. Um, yeah, I think they have to... challenges with their internet. Yes, yes, Thank yes. You. Unfortunately, some of these things um, we cannot um, control. So we'll just carry on and they will um, keep on trying and we hope that they will be able to join. So I'd like us to go back to something you mentioned earlier of the challenges that um, minority groups face. And I want you to speak from a point of being a woman and also a person, a person living with disability or a person with disability, sorry. So what are the challenges that you face when you try to go for these public positions? Um, not necessarily politics, but also holding position in organization societies and so forth yeah the challenges are numerous especially being a woman at one challenge to put yourself out there and being a person with disability it's another challenge so most of the time we tell our people that you need to have a double jump in order to get to your destination whilst others are going for one time jump we have to go a double jump double jump means first of all you have to overcome the stigma the stigma of being a woman because they tag you as a woman being a weaker vessel you cannot do it you cannot do that you are not supposed to go here you're not supposed to go that so that is the first jump then the second jump of letting them know that being a disabled doesn't mean that you cannot do it example you don't need um, um physical strength to go to 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 talk on the laws to be implemented you need your voice to be heard so if you can speak up if you can make a move on that one I think it should be enough for them to know a point that you are trying to prove. So like I said, for us, it's like a double jump for us to get to your destination. Yes, Pamela, thank you so much. Sorry um, mm -hmm. for that. I went missing a bit. So um, when we in advocacy talk of the challenges that women are facing, these are challenges that have been researched over and studied over and meetings have been had over it. And this is something we are actively working towards. Um, one of which is empowering these women to actually realize they have the abilities and the, and the experience and the qualifications to go for these positions. And two is trying to make the duty bearers understand the importance of having these women in these positions, the importance of equality, um, and what fruits we are you know, bound to bear from this. So I would like us to go into now wrapping up this conversation. Um, and I would like us to get into a state um which is for the state which is the media media has such a big influence especially during this period which is campaign period and how certain um scenarios and cases are portrayed in the media influence a lot of opinions um especially when it comes to voters so what would you what would be your call of action to these media houses um this is radio stations to social media platforms that have a huge following and um, we are seeing now cases of misinformation coming up we are seeing cases of um use of very brutal language and so what would be your call to action to this um media house mm. um i think the media also have a bigger role to play because for instance, as we are talking now, I don't know how many of the media stations in Ghana knows about my work, knows about what I'm doing at the background. 
to push other women and also persons with disability. So they should go out there, throw more light on the works of the few of us who are trying to, to I mean, encourage others and also to inspire others. Because in doing so, those who don't know about it will get to hear about it. Oh, seeing Eva on TV trying to encourage women to have a political will, to go out there, to put themselves out there, to be at the decision-making table. We we'll encourage them that if my sister is doing it, even with her disability, then what is my excuse? I can also do it if I put myself there. Yes, I will not say that there are no challenges. There are a lot of challenges for us. But if together we do it, one person goes out there, another person joins. Before you know it, we are becoming two, three, four. It will encourage more. And by the time you know it, we've got a 50% that we are always shouting and crying for. So I think the media has a bigger role to play. They should throw more light on our work and our activities. It should not only be on the political parties. Yes, we have our individual political parties that we, we join. But it shouldn't be that the issue is only for those who have the money to give. Sometimes I see it to be that if you have the money to give or to throw out there, they go for those that will make more news for them to create more viewership for their station. It should not just be that, but they should throw more light on it. 2016, they started something like that. Just because one of the minority parties in Ghana had a, a PWD as a flag bearer. So they were so much into that. And that party also gave a lot of opportunities to same persons with disability to also rally behind their flag bearer. So the, the media were so much interested in that, going to constituencies where they have PWDs contesting. But after 2016, we don't see that again. Though I know some of our women are still working very hard to get to the political limelight, but the media is not giving them the attention needed. So it is high time the media focus more on that. A few of them have created a disability dex where they focus mainly on disability issues. But what about the rest? So I think the media also have a bigger role to play. They should make it a conscious effort to create platforms and offices for persons with disability who are thriving in the society to get to every leadership area, not only in politics, but all positions. We are doing a lot if we should go into it, being it in medicine, being it in education, being it in information technology, persons with disability in Ghana are doing a lot, but the media is not just highlighting it. Thank you so much, Eva. And absolutely true. And the major work of the media is to highlight the work that is you know being done in the society and by who and also promoting good virtues and values and so um it is very key to see diversity in the groups that are invited for interviews in the groups that are given airtime in these uh, media houses in the groups that are actually um you know um the agendas are pushed um you know in this in these media houses and so Thank you so much um, for making your time today. Just to wrap up, I'd like to know, do you have any message for Ghanaians um, in this election period, um, you know, as we go to vote, as we register to vote, as we are looking to get more people, more young people involved in the voting process? Yeah, thank you very much for this opportunity. I would like to use this platform to I mean, tell all the political parties that we've been telling them all the time, and once again, we are saying it, that they should give the safe seat to women. They should encourage more women in their parties to go for leadership positions. Those who have the political will, they should encourage them. They should not sideline them. They should not give them names that will discourage them from going out there. And a few of them that are also making the effort, they should not drag them. They should not backbite them. They should give them the support needed. We need the men. Yes, we can do it, but we cannot do it without them. They should also give us the support, just as we give them the support at home so that they can have the peace of mind to work at the office. When you are also coming in, we are asking them to give us the support needed. And we also ask for peace because without peace, all this we are talking about cannot be relevant. We are asking for peace. We may have different opinions with different political agendas, but at the end of the day, it is one Ghana. 
So we should not forget that peace is very important. Thank, thank you. you, thank you, so much. <laughs> that was very heartfelt. Thank you so much. And for us here at Gen Z, um, we thank you for coming along with us this far. We thank you to our panelists and sincerely apologize um, that we were not able to be joined by Pamela and Henrietta to the end of this um, very, very great discussion and to you Eva for making time and offering such great insights um we see the work you are doing we appreciate it and we do wish you all the best and to every woman watching us happy international women's day do enjoy the rest of your day <laughs> happy international women's day bye 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 <laughs>